So to praise the Lord for each one that's come out to the Lord's house this morning. My, uh, I always think of my father, and I don't think he, I don't even know if he was aware of this verse, uh, Ecclesiastes 11.4, uh, he that regardeth the cloud shall not uh, reap, now watch me, I can't, I, I quote it all the time, he that uh, observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the cloud shall not reap. And that, that means we just keep going. You just can't watch the weather. You just trust God and keep going. Amen. All right. Judges chapter 5, verse 7. The inhabitants of the valley ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. Let's pray. Our gracious Father, we come before thee today. We're thankful for this opportunity Lord, just to praise thy precious name. And we glorify the name of Jesus this morning. Lord, we praise thy precious name for thy love and thy kindness, thy mercy. We praise you for God's children. We praise thee for our Christian people everywhere in churches across this land. We praise the name of Jesus. We ask you this morning to bless this service with thy presence that this service will be all that thou dost want it to be. Help us just to focus our hearts and our minds upon you, to leave our worldly concerns aside, and just to think of God this morning. And Lord, that you can work in our heart and in our life, and that we will uh, surrender, surrender to your will. We pray for unsaved people all across the land, that people will get saved. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach on the subject, Mom did what she had to. The year is 1225 B.C. The place is the Valley of Jezreel. And a fierce battle is in progress. The forces of Jabin, the king of the Canaanites, led by his captain Sisera, have unbelievably superior numbers to the tiny, tiny army of Israel. Their numbers and their weapons are superior. Sarissa, Sisera, the captain of the Canaanite army, had heard that a man named Barak had gathered an army of 10,000 soldiers and they had gone to Mount Tabor and were planning an insurrection against his king, Jabin. He immediately gathered all 900 iron chariots, of which Israel had none, a great army to go with him and journeyed and went to the river Kishon. It was there at Kishon that the small Israelite army attacked the great army of Sisera. And the Israelites, just mainly from two tribes, from Zebulun and from uh, Naphtali, were poorly armed. In fact, they had almost no arms at all. Their number being so much smaller, they understood that to attack an army that had iron chariots, that was well armed, an army of the Canaanites, without God's help, was sure defeat. But they had heard how their judge, Deborah, had been led of God and given a prophecy that they could defeat the Canaanite army. And so they bravely went to battle. As the two armies clashed, it seemed there would be, it would be no contest. The army led by Sisera was far superior. But something began to happen in that battle. We're not told exactly what happened. All we're told is that the stars fought against Sisera. The waters of the river swept them away, and the horses' hooves were broken. Could it have been that great claps of thunder began to sound as that battle started? That the Canaanite soldiers, not expecting anything, and the Israelite soldiers expecting God to fight up on their side that the Canaanite army began to fear because of the great claps of thunder that seemed to shake the very ground on which they stood. Mighty bolts of lightning. And as I said, we're not told. We're only told the stars fought against them. Mighty bolts of lightning may have danced across the sky 
Whatever, whatever took place, the Canaanites lost their courage and began to flee. The Israelites picked up the weapons that they were dropping as they left and began to slay them. It began to rain, torrents of rain. The river Kishon leaped out of its banks and washed the chariots and the horses and the men away. And a mighty battle was won that day. Sisera, the captain of the Canaanite army, had fled his chariot, evidently unable to get his horses to run in, in the uh, deluge. But he had fled his chariot. And true to Deborah's prophecy, he had run to the tent of Jael, a Canaanite lady. And he had sought sanctuary there, and she had asked him in and, and uh, told him uh, to have some milk. She had given him some milk, and he laid down to go to sleep. And she took a tent peg and drove it through his head. And he died there in her tent. Not a very noble death for a great soldier. All because God had used Deborah, a woman, a mother in Israel, who loved the Lord, who had faith and courageously followed the Lord, she was willing to do what she had to do. Praise the Lord for Christian mothers this morning. Praise the Lord for Christian mothers who follow the Lord, who live for Jesus, and are willing to do what they have to do to please God. I want to preach about that a little while. First of all, Deborah was a woman who was a mother, a mother who had great faith in the Lord. In Judges, here in this fifth chapter, the seventh verse, the inhabitants of the villages ceased, they ceased in Israel, until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. This verse is a quote from Deborah. The Bible uh, tells us something important here about Deborah. She was a judge. If you look here in the fourth chapter, and that's what this covers, uh, chapter 4 and chapter 5. If you look here in this fourth chapter, verse 3 and 4. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron. And that's talking about Sisera. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron. And 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel, Jabin uh, the king here, and Sisera his captain. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, the judge, excuse me, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Now the Bible tells us here that here was a lady who was a judge of Israel. That's quite exceptional. Because as you read through the book of Judges, you find that there are five judges and she is the only one that is a judge. Now, she wasn't just the kind of judge that you went before and, uh, and she uh, cry, tried criminal things or something like we think of a judge. She was, she was a judge in the same sense that, that Gideon was a judge and that Samson was a judge, much in the same sense that Moses was a judge. She was a leader of God's people. God had blessed her with the gift of prophecy. He had, he had brought her to a place that she was the leader of his people. She, here was a, a woman who was an exceptional lady. Here was a woman who loved the Lord and God had used her mightily. She was the leader of her people. The New Testament says women prophesy and use their gifts for the Lord. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And let me read there... Uh, Verse 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5. Well, let me start with verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, which tells us that men pray and prophesy, right? Every man praying or prophesying, have, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So it tells us, men, that we as men are made in the image of God, that we are... Uh, representatives of Christ, and when we pray or prophesy, we need to have uh, our heads uncovered when we come to the house of God. That's one reason we don't wear hats in the house of God, because we are in the image of God. Verse 5, but every woman that prayeth or prophesy, which tells us what? That women can pray, they can prophesy, they use spiritual gifts. 
All right? But every woman that prayeth and prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. The woman is made in the image, the glory of the man. She's man's help me. And it's talking about the order that God placed in the family and the order that God has placed in his church. But I want you to notice very carefully that God uses ladies. He uses ladies just like he uses men. He gives ladies spiritual gifts just like he does men. He uses ladies to work in his, in his, in his work and to do his will just like he does men. Now it doesn't say that they're pastors or evangelists here, but they do prophesy, they do have spiritual gifts, and there's no difference, the Bible tells us there's no difference in God's eyes between a man and a woman. God had used Deborah here. He had blessed her. He had used her in such a way that she came to a place that she became the leader of her people. You see, God wants to use everybody. Listen, let me, I think one of the most important things that we can understand in our life is that God wants to use us. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about how, what a blessing it is that, yes, it's a tremendous blessing that, that God will save us, but have you ever thought about what a blessing it is that God wants to use you? Let me tell you something this morning. God wants to use you. If you're here under the sound of my voice today, I can guarantee you this. God wants to use, he has a special purpose for you. He has a special job for you. He wants to use you in a special way. He wants to make your life something special. He took this lady. He gave her spiritual gifts. He blessed her and he used her to win a mighty victory for his people in Israel. What a blessing. There's a, a book written by Watchman Nee that I read many years ago. I tried to find it, but I couldn't. I can't remember the title of it. But I, I remember reading when, the, when China took over, or when the communists took over China, Watchman Nee told the story that the churches there, of course, lost a lot of their men. And there was, there was not enough men to go around, so to speak. There was not enough men to do the need to do the business of the church and to take care of the church. And women had to step up, women preached, which is not ordinarily, I don't think, acceptable in the scripture. Women preached, women did some of the jobs. They, took, they, they stepped up and they took part and Watchman Nee said they did a tremendous job keeping those churches going and promoting Christ and winning souls. Notice carefully, Deborah was used of the Lord here to win a mighty victory for God. I first started preaching, when I first started preaching, I preached at a, at a little church, uh, preached a revival. Uh, in fact, it was one of the first revival services I held. Uh, I preached at a little uh, church in Circle City, Missouri. And it was, a, it was a pretty good sized little community. It was a small community. And they had a church there. But something had happened. I don't know, over the years, the church had gone down. It got to the place that there was just a couple of ladies there and some children coming. And there were people who said, let's close the church. The denomination said, we need to close the church. It's just, you know, there's just not enough people there. There's no men at all. There was no men at all there. They said, we need to close the church. There were two ladies who said, no, we're not going to close this church. If we have to, we'll go on by ourselves. If we have to, we will do what we have to. Two mothers took charge there, and they began to work in that community. They, they called me to have a revival. They called some other people later on, to, some other men, to have a revival. And, and that church began to grow, and souls began to save, and they just wouldn't take no rest. They were willing to do what they have to do. Praise the Lord for mothers who will do what they have to do. And moms do that, don't they? They're called on sometimes to do a lot of different jobs and a lot of different functions but they do what they have to do. Deborah was a judge because the Lord made her a judge. She was a woman who was close to the Lord. Here was a person who lived a dedicated, holy Christian life. You know the Lord will use anyone who will dedicate their life to Him. Now, people need to have faith in the Lord. God can't use us. He wants to use us. He has the power to use us. 
But he can't use us unless we have faith. Unless we believe in him and we trust in him and we're willing to serve him. And, and you know, that's not just for, that's not for the ladies this morning. We're, this is Mother's Day. We want to we wanna praise the ladies as much as we can today. Uh, those, who, especially those that serve the Lord. But God will use men, women, boys, girls, people who will have faith in him and trust him. Listen, if we'll just put our faith in the Lord and do what God wants to, he will use us. Folks, you don't have to question that. God will use you this morning. Here was a lady who was dedicated to the Lord. She was willing to obey the Lord. She did what God asked her to do. My, I think that's the secret to the Christian life. So many folks try to live for God, and they want God's blessings. I, I, I think we all want the blessings. I want to go to heaven. Amen? I want, to, I, want to, I want for the Lord to, to walk with me every day. I want the Lord to bless me every day. But you know, the Bible simply says that if we want to do that, we need to surrender our heart to Him, to live for Him, to obey Him, and do His will. If we do that, God's going to use us and God's going to bless us. But you know, we can't get the blessings of God until we surrender to Him. He won't bless us like He can until we surrender all of our life to Him. Secondly, Deborah was a woman who had great courage and went, to the, and went to battle for the Lord. In Judges chapter 4, verse 8, And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And verse 9, And she said, I will surely do with I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for, for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Deborah was a gallant woman. And she knew uh, the Lord would bless this endeavor. And she went right out to the battlefield. You see, it was Deborah who gave the order to Barak to, to, to attack this army. Don't go with me to Judges, the fourth chapter again. And let me read there verses 14. And verse 15. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord discomfited Sisera and all his chariots and all his host with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. Deborah was right there. You see, Barak, Deborah called Barak and said, Look, God's going to use you. God's going to deliver the Canaanite army into your hands. All you have to do is go fight the battle. It was God's will for, for Barak to go out there and lead this army. But he was a little timid. Now, Barak was a man of faith. But he was not willing to, to go unless Deborah went. He said, I'll go if you'll go with me. And if you don't go with me, I'm not going to go. And she said, okay, I will go. She went right out to the battlefield, right to the edge of the battlefield. She was right there at Mount Tabor when she saw that vast Canaanite army gather at the river of Kishon. And she said to Barak, get up and go. Now it's time God's saying to me, get up and go. You can win the battle. The Lord's out there. He's going to fight the battle for you and you're going to win this battle. Get up and go. She was right there. Now, if they had lost this battle, she knew she was putting her life in her hand because if, she, if they had lost this battle, she would have been killed right there on the battlefield. Here was a brave lady. Here was a woman who was willing what she had to do. I'm so thankful for gallant women who serve in the armed forces today. And I want to, I want to just praise the Lord for them. I read where 27% of the, army, of the Army's people today are women. There have been th over 30 women killed uh, on duty in Iraq. And I, I read through some of these names and saw some of the pictures, and I couldn't help but just stop and bow my head and pray for the families of these people, what a sacrifice they made. But here were some ladies, many of them mothers, who so loved their country, and I, so, I, know, I, I know many of them Christians, no, no doubt, some of them I'm sure not, but I'll praise all of them for their dedication to their country. 
But here were some ladies who were willing, you know, they were called to go and, and, and uh, it's our military's uh, policy not to put women on the front line, but they were put in a situation where they could die and some of them have died. Listen, these were brave ways. Praise God, we've got women like this in America who love their country. Amen. Deborah was that kind of person. She was willing to put her life on the line. I'm also very thankful for women and mothers who are, who are willing to fight the spiritual battles that they have fought in the Lord's army. And by the way, that's the most important battles, is to fight the battle. You know, God doesn't just call us to bless us. Did you know that? We're, we, you know, if we're saved this morning, and you know, if we know the Lord Jesus Christ, we're soldiers in God's army. That's what the church is, by the way. The church is God's army. A lot, of, a lot of people look at the church and say, well, it's just a place where you can go and, and, and hear the preaching of God's word. It's a place where you can go and be in Sunday school. It's a place where you can go and worship. Listen, all that is, is correct. All that is important. But listen, the church is God's army. We're called to go out and fight the spiritual battles. We're called to go out and win souls. We're called to do what God wants us to do. This is just a place. This is the headquarters for his army. And I praise the Lord for ladies. There's probably more women here this morning than there are men. Be close. But praise God for the ladies. Amen? I thank the Lord for single ladies who love the Lord and are dedicated Christians. Young ladies, I, I praise God for every young person that loves Jesus. And let me tell you something, young person. There has never been a greater need in America today than for young people to really sell out to the Lord and live for Christ. I know the teenage years are years when you're kind of, everything's new. And you're feeling your way through life. You've got, some, you've got some freedom and, and independence that, that you didn't have when you, before you were a teenager. You begin to think new thoughts and search out new things. But it's, and that's the reason it's so important for teenagers to really surrender their life to Christ and live by the Bible. You see, God can guide you through life and he can, he can give you, he can tell you the right decisions to make. He can tell you the right road to take when you come up uh, to a decision in life. If you know the Lord and you're really sold out to God and you ask him uh, for direction, he'll give you direction. So important. So many, so many young people today are Christians, but they're not really dedicated they're not really sold out to God. In fact, I think that's true of a lot of people today. They're Christians, but they really haven't sold out to God. They really haven't surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, listen. Deborah was a person who surrendered her whole life to Christ and lived for God, and God used her, and God blessed her. And she was a warrior in God's army. I praise the Lord for single ladies who love the Lord, work in church, have a testimony where they work and live for the Lord. I praise the Lord for mothers who support their husbands. Boy, how important that is. Most of us probably gave a, we were married, probably gave our wife a, a card today that said something about her love and her support for us. And those aren't just words. So many times I thought, you know, if God hadn't given me Sister Noise for my, for my traveling mate through this life, if she was not my closest friend, if I didn't have her so many times, how much more discouraged the devil could have made me. How important it is. I praise the Lord for mothers and wives who support their husbands and support their children spiritually who make a Christian home. Boy, there's nothing more important today than to, to have a Christian home. Some place where Jesus is glorified, where children can come into that home and Jesus Christ is glorified and the Bible is not just a book on the shelf somewhere, but where the Bible is read and taught and lived and, and, and children are taught the word of God and, and as they go out and, and dope peddlers try to 
to sell them dope and, and immoral people trying to get them to do wrong things and they've got something to fight it with. They can say, no, that's not right. I know it's not right because God says it's not right. To give your family a Christian foundation. And it's not all negative. It's not like some people think. I've seen young people witness, win souls, radiant Christians, happy young people. There is just nothing like a Christian home. And I know sometimes that's, there's divided homes. But think of how important it is in a divided home to have a Christian mother who prays and, 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 and is an encouragement and a strength to the children in that home. Praise the Lord for them. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I praise the Lord for mothers who live for Christ even though their husbands don't. How hard that is. How hard it is to get up and go to church by yourself. Get the children ready by yourself. Teach the children the Bible by yourself. Sometimes, in some cases where uh, the husband may even resist that strongly. My dad was not a Christian. Uh, until just before he died. He was a good man. He didn't fight me about Christianity, but he, he didn't go to church. And it was left on my mother's shoulders to raise my brother and I in church. And boy, she did. And she did with an iron hand. It wasn't one of these deals where you get up and say, well, I think I'll go this morning, Mom. No, and I'm, talking, I'm not talking about when we was little fellas. I'm talking about as long as I was in the home. Now, she didn't have much trouble with me, but I knew exactly what would happen. My... I won't get into that. Well, I'll tell you, he wouldn't mind me telling you that. My brother went through a period when he said, I'm not going to church. My mother said, yes, you are. She wasn't a bit worried about losing her, her son because she knew the only salvation, the only way she could get her son to heaven is if she won him to Christ and he lived for the Lord. Praise God for a mother who, who took a stand. Praise God for a mother. She, knocked, she got knocked down. She got hurt. And she, I seen her cry because my dad wouldn't go to church with her and because my dad didn't believe the Lord. Later he got saved, but I seen her take a stand. Praise God for Christian mothers who do what they have to. Amen. I praise the Lord for single mothers. And there's a lot of them today, and that's so sad. But I praise the Lord for single mothers who love the Lord and keep their families in church. Let me tell you something. Life does go wrong sometimes. Men a lot of times don't live up to their responsibility. Sister Noyes worked with a lady. I didn't hardly know her. I just knew her through my wife. Don't know hardly anybody I had more respect for than that young lady. Because by all accounts, her husband was the kind of guy that didn't have any character. There came a time when he just said, I'm done with the marriage. They had two young girls, and he left. And there she was alone with, with two young daughters to raise. They had been in church. Now, she could have been the kind of lady that said, oh, I just can't make it by myself. She could have said, I can't get the kids ready, all these things going on. I'm just, she could have dropped out of church. She didn't. She just doubled her determination. She determined her, her children were going to be raised in church and they were going to know the Lord. She could have given up on discipline. She, said, she could have said, I just can't handle work. You, have you ever thought about how much work it is to go and put in an eight-hour day and come home and, and then uh, the minute you walk in the door have to get supper ready for kids and, and do all the washing and all the ironing and, and get up the next morning and go off to work and put up with all the trouble. I, my, my, my hat is off to Christian mothers, single mothers who love the Lord and have the determination to keep their children in church. This young lady didn't miss. She was in church, kept her children in church. I got the privilege of meeting those young ladies. They had standards. Young ladies that wore dress below their knee. They were sharp looking kids. 
Yes, sir. No, sir. They had manners. She had a stroke and died. Those young ladies were well taught in the Christian faith. Praise God for young mothers who love the Lord and do what they have to do. See, the Lord honors his soldiers, doesn't he? God will honor anyone, man or, man or woman, who loved him and who wants to live for him. Now, let me ask you a question this morning. It doesn't matter who you are. Do you want to live for the Lord? Oh, you see, that's the question. Jesus doesn't call people who doesn't want to live for him. He, may, he calls everybody. When he was put up on the cross, he was lifted up that all men might be drawn unto him. Listen, if you, and I've heard people say, well, I don't feel convicted. If you know that Jesus died on the cross for you and died for your sins, you are convicted. You don't have to wait for some earth-shaking experience. You know that God loves you. And you know that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for you so you could be saved. You need to come to this altar and surrender your life to Christ and live for him. But you see, Jesus would not allow people to follow him who didn't want to follow him. Did you know that? I see people today who say, well, you know, God, I'm going to go this far, and that's as far as I'm going. Listen, when you say to the Lord, I'm going this far, and, and you mean it, that's as far as I'm going. I'm going, let me tell you something, that's as far as you're going. God will not make you surrender to him. He will plead with you. The precious Holy Spirit don't give up on you. Amen. He will plead with you. But the only people who follow Jesus are the ones who want to follow him. Hallelujah. Listen, this is a volunteer army we're serving this morning. This is not, we've not been drafted. Jesus came and died on the cross and called us and we follow him because we love him. I thank the Lord for people, young people, old people, who want to follow Jesus. Let me ask you this morning. Is God speaking to your heart? He'll never ask you to do something wrong. He'll never ask you to do something that's not right for you to do. Have you, have you studied the scripture? Have you seen something in the Bible and, and it's convicted you and you've kind of withdrawn and said, I'm not going to do that. Let me tell you something. God is reaching out to you to help you not to hurt you. Get your water changed, amen? Amen. That's what we need. You see, when we're, when we're resisting the Lord and we're not doing what God wants us to do, we're not living the way God wants us to do, we just need to get our water changed. Praise God for people who have their water changed. They want the things that God wants. The last thing. Deborah was a, a, a woman who loved the Lord and had a mother's heart. Verse 7 says, The inhabitants of the village, villages ceased. They ceased in Israel. That means... The Canaanites were raiding the Israelites. Jabin had oppressed the Israelites. They had robbers and thieves. There was, no, there, was not much, there was not much law and order in Israel. Robbers and thieves could break through and, and steal about any time they wanted. And the Canaanites were oppressed. They just kind of treated the Israelites the way they wanted to. And Deborah says, the inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. I read where one commentator believed this meant Deborah had a motherly attitude as a, a judge of Israel. He said it's not really referring to the fact that she was literally a mother. I copied down his statement. He's a great commentator. Gill says, and I quote, until it pleased God to raise her up, and endowed her in a very wonderful and extraordinary manner with gifts qualifying her to be a nursing mother to Israel, to teach and instruct them in the mind and will of God, to administer judgment and justice to them, to protect and defend them, and in all which she discovered a material affection for them, a maternal infection, affection for them, and as a good judge and a ruler of people may be called the father of them, so she being a woman is with propriety called a mother in Israel, having an affectionate concern for them as her children, unquote. Now I certainly believe she had a heart to be a mother as a judge, as a leader of her people. She had a heart for her people. 
But I have to differ here because the Bible says she was a mother. Did you notice that? She said, I, a mother in, she didn't say a mother of Israel. See the difference in these little words? She said, I, a mother in Israel. You see, Deborah was married. You, the scripture tells us that. I believe she had children. I think probably her children were grown at this time, out of the home maybe. And God called her to do a job for his people. And the, Lord, and the Lord used her to accomplish a great victory here. You know, the Lord accomplishes great things through Christian mothers who love the Lord and serve him. Mothers, let me tell you something. I know the world today puts being a housewife down. And, they've try, and they try to make little girls think that if you're just a housewife, if that's, if that's such a lowly job, and they try to look at the, they, they say, look at, look at uh, you know, you need to be like the men. Look at the men. They have, they have professions, and, and they do important things, and, and they, they're out there, and they, have, they make a lot of money. Well, you're this lowly little housewife, and you're under your husband's thumb, and he's, he's taking advantage of you because you're not accomplishing anything. Well, he's accomplishing everything. That's the attitude of the world. That's women's lib. Charles Spurgeon was from England. He was one of the greatest preachers of all time. I don't have all of his sermons. I just have, I think, one or two of his sermon books. When I started out in the ministry, I, I got some of D.L. Moody's books, and I got some of Spurgeon's books, and some of Luther's books, some of the great preachers, because I want to read how they preached. Spurgeon is, has such a good education. But more than anything else, he can, just, he can just reason with a whole room full of people. He can just he can just logically talk to you about Christ. He can just include you as you as he preaches. And as, if you've read his sermons, you know what I'm talking about. He can just include you in the, without you saying a word. He can include you in the conversation. He can get right inside your head and think along with you and make you think with him. Tremendous man, tremendous. You know, and only the Holy Spirit can do that. God used him so tremendously. I'm saying he's a great man of God. One of the greatest the world's ever produced. See, we think sometimes of John the Baptist. And who could ever, who could ever stand alongside John the Baptist or Moses or the Apostle Paul or the Apostle Peter? There's nobody that comes up to that level, is there? But let me tell you something. God has, some, has had some awfully great people today, and he's got some great people right now. Charles Spurgeon once said, that even as he got old, no matter how old he got, he would not forget the prayers of his mother. He said when they were little children, she would gather them around the table, the kitchen table, and she would sit there with them and she would read the Bible verse after verse after verse after verse to these little kids. And she would take the time to explain every verse. She would talk to them about the Lord. He said, inevitably, when they had finished reading the scripture and she had explained the verses, well, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if, if ladies would do that with their children today? Dads need to be the leaders. They need to, they need to work with their kids and teach their kids. And mothers need to, to lead their children and teach their kids and work with their kids. Let me tell you, you cannot teach your children about God too much. Don't ram it down their throat. Let them know you love them. Let them know that you want them to get saved. Weep with them and cry with them and laugh with them. Spend time with them. And talk to them about Jesus. Talk to them about heaven and what you want for them. Because they said there would come a time after they had talked 
after she had asked him this question, always this question, he said there would always be this question, when are you going to get right with Jesus? And then she would pray for each of them. Let me ask you something. This great man of God who won thousands to the Lord God used so miraculously and tremendously. Was he the greatest? Or was it this little old mother that we don't even know her name? Who took those little children, this little housewife that the world says is so insignificant, this little housewife. Oh, by the way, his dad was an independent preacher. For this little lady who took her children and loved them to death for the Lord and taught them God's word and prayed with them, it was that little lady that Spurgeon said, no matter how old he got, he would never forget her influence in his life. Praise God. Now, you know, she had to do the washing. She had to do the ironing. She had to go to church. She had to do all the things that mothers do. But she was willing to do whatever she had to do. Praise God for mothers who are willing to do whatever they have to do. God wants to save everybody. He wants to save men, women, boys, and girls this morning. You know, I know a preacher that got saved when he was five years old. Don't tell me. I know the age of accountability, and that's, that's the time we count. But his testimony is he got saved when he was five years old. He's a great man of God. When he says, I got saved at five years old, believe me, I believe every word of it, he got saved when he was five years old. Don't underestimate God's dealing with young children. I had the privilege one time, well, I, two or three times actually, I had the privilege one time of going into a hospital room. And I know the man was over 70, I think he was over 80, but I'm not sure. I know he was over 70. Never had seen him before. He could barely speak, he was on his deathbed, and I had the privilege to take the gospel to him and hear him say yes I'm saved God wants to save you God wants to save everybody we're praising the Lord for mothers this morning but that praise goes to Jesus Christ God wants to save you let's pray